Let's shape a child's world. That's what we're going to explore in this week's episode of Pookie Ponders. Let's dive straight in. What we say matters and there are some things that our children especially need to hear from the adults they most care about. I've explored five of these in today's episode starting with I love you. Our children need to hear from their caregivers, from their parents, from those who work with and care for them that they are loved. Children need to know that they are loved. It can be easy to assume that they must know this as we often feel it so deeply, but we should never assume that a child knows that they are loved. We must tell them many, many times and in many, many ways. Children with low self-esteem in particular will not assume the love of others. So we need to love them out loud and and really spell it out. That low self-esteem, that critical inner narrative can negate the positive words of others. And so we need to hear them many, many more times. And it can make us feel unloved, unlovable, like we're not worthy of the kindness and the care of others. And when we see ourselves through such a negative lens, then we will never assume the love of another person. Person, no matter how obvious that love might be to the person giving it. So if there is a child in your care, in your life, who you feel deeply for, who you love, who you care about, for whom you have strong feelings, don't assume that those feelings are obvious to that child. They need to hear that you love them. Maybe you're listening to this in a professional capacity, though, and you think it's not appropriate to love the children in your care. I would hasten to disagree. Professional love is fundamental. It's the thing that can keep us sane in an otherwise unforgiving role at times. And some of our children will receive love only in a professional capacity. Sometimes professional love is the first or the only love that these children will know. And yes, we need to find ways to feel this and deliver this in ways that are appropriate and professional and which follow all the relevant safeguarding guidance but our children need to know and feel and hear that they are loved. So what does this actually look like in practice? Okay we need to say it. Just tell children that you love them or other positive words to that effect. Instead of just thinking the positive things, the good things, the the welling up of joy and hope and love and kindness that you feel for this child, say it out loud. Instead of just thinking the positive thoughts, give them a voice. Write it. Uh, Cognitive filters can mean, as I said before, that some children are not very great at hearing the positives that are said to them. It can be like water off a duck's back and they're more attuned to hearing the negatives because this is in line with the world view and it it chimes with what they expect to hear. Um, And so for these children, they can really benefit from actually having a tangible reminder they can return to as many times as they need to. So a note or a message that they can look back on can be incredible incredibly helpful here. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to disappear into the ether like our spoken words do. Um, It's something that they, they can keep that's tangible. A voice recording could, of course, also do a similar thing, can be played again many times. And finally, we can show it. So we can show our love and affection through our interactions with our children. So sometimes a a handhold or a bear hug is going to say more than a thousand words ever could for some of our children. Don't fall into the trap um, of thinking that children grow out of needing this kind of touch. Um, Many of us will still benefit from it as an adult. I I know I certainly do. I'm going through a bit of a tricky moment just now and hugs, cuddles, Big, deep bear hugs and a handhold um, are one of the most important forms of love that I can hear uh, and which help me uh, right now. Um, There can be a prickly stage in the middle with our teens, with our adolescents, when things are a little bit less cuddly uh, with children and, and young people. But at this point, if we find that we we feel ourselves a little pushed away, just being alongside, walking in step or or playful touch like fist bumps um, might fill the void. Um, but, But don't assume to stop with the cuddles and just allow the child to resume them as and when they're ready without making too big of a fuss. There'll come a time when the cuddles return. What other words do our children need to hear? We've had I love you and that goes at the top of the list with good reason. Next, I'm proud of you. 
Recognizing and acknowledging a child's achievements is going to foster positive self-image. Adults can express pride in both the big and the small accomplishments. Remember, these are all big things for our children. This is going to boost confidence. And this pride is going to mean so much when it comes from an adult that the child deeply loves and respects. So what is this going to look like day to day? You can say it or write it, as we talked about before with the love, a bit, a bit like the love thing. So it's, it's partly about externally expressing the things that we're already thinking and feeling, getting them out in the world, making them out loud. So taking a moment to voice aloud or write down the pride that we're feeling for our child. Try to be specific in our pride. Don't just tell your child that you're proud of them. That's a start. That's fantastic. But tell them why. What exactly have they done, thought, said that made you feel that little spark of joy and pride let them know tell them very specifically what it is that makes you proud give them the details and let them know why it mattered to you what did it make you feel this is going to help your child to feel kind of really truly seen and appreciated and it's a lot more meaningful than blanket praise well done buddy good job these things mean very little in all honesty And finally, we can praise the process. So let the child know how proud you are of them for the steps along the way, regardless of whether or not they reach the final destination. Children are often praised for the outcomes of their actions, but the outcomes are in and of themselves a reward. We don't necessarily need external praise from other people when we get to the end because we've got to the end and that feels great. But for some children, for many children, it's the steps along the way that are harder. And for some children for many children they never get to the point of the outcome and what they need to hear is praise for the thoughts the beliefs the actions the process of going along that pathway so the outcomes there are great cherry on top for sure but but it's not much more than that so along the way when the child is trying their hardest or when the outcomes feel impossible to achieve notice how hard they're trying praise them for their actions and their attitudes along the way this is going to feel a lot bigger a lot more important and a lot more motivating for the child than the cherry on top praise of a job well done other words that significantly shape a child's world when coming from an adult that they really care about I'm sorry. I'm sorry is one of the most powerful phrases that a child can hear from an adult. It goes beyond acknowledging of mistakes. It demonstrates humility, accountability, commitment to repair. When we are brave enough, and it really does take some bravery, but when we are brave enough to show up and admit our mistakes, We're going to provide a profound lesson in forgiveness and learning from errors. Here are some ideas for putting it into practice. This is one that people often feel a little bit uncomfortable with, but it's so powerful. Okay, so we can model sincere apologies. So our children are going to learn by observing. They learn so much more from what they see us do, from what they observe in our actions, than from the things that we try to formally teach them often. So we're going to model those sincere apologies. Let the children learn by seeing. As adults, openly acknowledging and apologizing when we make a mistake. This is going to model the behavior that we want our children to emulate, showing them that everyone, regardless of age, can learn and grow from their mistakes. We can teach conflict resolution. We can use instances of mistakes and apologies as opportunities to teach conflict resolution skills. We can guide the child through discussing the issue, understanding different perspectives, and finding resolutions collaboratively. This is gonna equip them with valuable skills for navigating interpersonal relationships. Um, And another thing we can try is an apology letter exchange. I've seen this done to really good effect. So one thing that can work here is, is for adults and children to write apology letters to each other when conflicts arise. This kind of written communication is going to provide a bit more of an opportunity for thoughtful reflection and it can help both the adult and the child to express their feelings and commitment to kind of moving forwards positively. So you have a bit more time to think about it. You've got a chance to make mistakes, to think, to really put together what we actually want to say and say only those words that we really want to. Um, I think 
we should never expect this kind of action of a child, which we often do. You need to write a letter to say sorry, unless we're prepared to engage with it ourselves. And remembering, again, the role modelling. If this is an exchange of letters, we have written to the child and they have written to us, then there's a learning moment here. We're able to show the way, to guide the way. They can learn from us. And actually, sometimes, maybe, we'll learn from them too. When we've done this kind of activity, it has many purposes because it has that purpose in the moment of the exchange, of the repair of that rupture, but also we can reflect later. And this might be another moment when we show pride, when we show love, when we let the child know how we felt when we read those words and what that's doing for our relationship. So you can role model so much here. Other little words that do big things for our small people. You are safe. Children need not only to be safe, but to feel safe. This might need a lot of reassurance from their trusted adults, especially if they've got past experiences of feeling deeply unsafe or for prolonged periods of time. Feeling safe is a fundamental right of every child, every human. And there are many things that we can say and do to create that sense of safety for our children so they know that they are safe. So reassurance and repetition is right up there. Some children will simply need to hear the same words many, many, many times. You are safe. You are safe. I'm here. I've got you. I'm by your side. They'll need to be reassured that they're safe, that you're sticking with them. At times of calm, you can talk to the child about the words they most need to hear from you in order to feel safe. And you can use these words at times of distress. These words are going to be simple things. You're safe. I've got you. It's going to be okay. I'm right here with you. I'm not going anywhere. Simple, simple words that need to be heard a thousand times for the child to feel safe. You can spell out the safety. What might seem blatantly obvious to you as the adult um, who did the, the risk assessment, whether that was official in the role of teacher or safeguarding officer or unofficially in the role of parent, constantly scanning, constantly trying to make sure that things are safe. It's not always obvious to the child that they're actually safe. So actually spelling out the actions um, that have been taken to keep the child safe can be really, really reassuring to them. So I might do this, for example, if I'm bouldering, so my low-level climbing that I'm always harping on about with a new child. So if I'm climbing, bouldering with a new child, I'll show them that whilst they might fall, that's okay because the matting underneath us is soft. I might demonstrate actually falling off the wall. This serves many purposes, not just to show them they're safe, but to help to, to show role modelling of mistakes and it's okay and, and many other things as well. But actually literally demonstrating we're going to be climbing. That can feel a little bit scary. The floor's really soft here. Look, I can fall right from the top and I won't hurt myself. Let's practice falling from the bottom as well. And then it's important to remember that when it comes to enabling children to feel safe, it's not just about what you say. It's about how that is heard. So paying attention to the tone of your voice, speaking in a calm and soothing manner, especially during those moments of stress and uncertainty. So remember here my very favorite technique to teach, slow, low, low, where we slow down the pace of our speech, we lower the volume, and we lower the pitch of our voice. So we're giving that lovely audible hug. A gentle tone is going to convey safety to the child and help them feel secure in your presence, regardless of what words are coming from your mouth. And finally for today, so we've told our children, I love you. We've told them, I'm proud of you. We've told them, I'm sorry. And we've told them you're safe. Finally, our children need to know, I am listening. Active and empathetic listening is the cornerstone of effective communication with children, with all people, in fact. It involves not just hearing their words, but actually understanding their emotions and their experiences that they're trying to express. So how can we do this? And how can we show that we're listening through our words and our interactions? We can use reflective responses. We can respond to the child with reflective statements that show, actively demonstrate that we are trying to understand their feelings. So for example, it sounds like you're feeling sad or I hear that whatever issue is important to you. Can you tell me more about it? 
We can ask open-ended questions. We can encourage conversation by asking open-ended questions, which instead of yes-no queries, they ask the child to share more details and invites them to elaborate on their thoughts. This is going to show that we value their perspective and that we want to hear more. And I'm ready to listen. This is a phrase I use a lot. Sometimes, for example, if a child is experiencing anger or anxiety, they might not be ready to talk just yet. I find here that it can be helpful to let them know, I'm ready to listen when you're ready to talk. I'll sometimes use this exact phrase, like a broken record, over and over and over again, using my slow, low, low. I'm ready to listen when you're ready to talk again and again and again until the child has calmed sufficiently to actually engage with the conversation. I find it a helpful phrase as it can acknowledge that anger, for example, needs to be heard and that I'm all about the listening once the child is ready. It, it, it can, admittedly, feel a little bit daft doing that whole broken record thing again and again and again. But remember, when our children are overwhelmed, they're going to hear the hopefully calm tone that we're conveying rather than our actual words. So they're only going to tune into the words as their internal kind of maelstrom of emotions starts to settle. So even if you've said the same thing a hundred times, they might only hear it the last three. Okay, as we conclude another episode of Pookie Ponders, let's reflect on that profound influence of our words in shaping the lives of the children that we care for. We need to carry these lessons, they're simple but big. We need to carry them forward and just recognise the tremendous impact that our words can have on a child's world. Those words, I love you, I'm proud of you, I'm sorry, you're safe and I'm listening. Take them forward with you into your day, into your week, and hopefully there were some helpful ideas for you. If you liked what you heard today, uh, please like, subscribe, and share my work. You can support my work further, if should you wish to, by joining me over on Patreon, where you get early access to all of my resources and the chance to influence what I work on next. Or you can invite me to speak at your next event or in your setting, either virtually or face-to-face. -face. Um, thank you so much for listening and for everything that you're doing for the children and young people in your care. And thank you also to those of you who have reached out to me. I'm aware that uh, you're aware because I try to be open and honest about it that I'm having a little bit of a mental health moment things are slightly challenging I've got good friends good support uh, good family around me and I am very confident that I will be absolutely fine but I'll keep you posted um, but I also am aware with my past and that many of you have walked alongside me that I have sometimes a tendency to get very ill very quickly and so people do worry they do care and you will remarkably kind um I'm on the case I am working hard on it I am surrounding myself with love and trying really really hard um but thank you for the love thank you for the kindness thank you for the care and thank you for giving me ever more motivation to keep on trying so hard okay for now this has been Pookie Ponders with me Pookie Nightsmith until next time stay curious Stay compassionate and keep pondering. Over and out. Mm -hmm.